Hey, I know I've covered some of the elements in a few of the other videos um, of how to contribute code to SRV2, but I thought it'd be good to put together just a comprehensive guide here on the quickest and easiest way that you can get started. Of course, all of this assumes that you're using Windows if you're using another platform. What I would recommend you do in that case is reach out to the Discord and talk to some of the folks in the hard coding channel on how you can get set up. So first thing you need is Visual Studio, and if you don't have it already, I would just go to visualstudio.com and it'll redirect you here to this website, Microsoft, and you want to click this free Visual Studio up at the top of the screen. And you want to choose Visual Studio Community. It's just a free download, it'll download a setup file, go through, install all of the main tools. When you are installing, it's going to give you a lot of different options here. Make sure that you have desktop development with C++ checked. I don't believe it's checked by default, but that's the one that you're gonna to need to include all of the C++ components you'll need to compile. First thing you need to do is go to git.srb2.org and click register in the top right corner and create an account. Once you've finished the account setup process, You'll be back here at the main page and it shows a list of the projects that you can explore. The one that you want is stjr srb2. This is the main one. You just click on it and you go up to the top right where this fork icon is and click to create a new fork. I'm using the Ultimate Zone Builder project, not the srb2 project because I've already forked that. So this will show you um, exactly what you'll see when you do this for the first time. You can edit your project name if you want. Personally, I would say leave it all alone. I wouldn't touch any of these settings, leave it at all branches, keep it public, and then click the fork project button. After it's done forking, you can go up to this little fox icon in the top left corner, and it will take you to all of your projects or your forks. And you'll see here I have the, my own SRV2 fork under SSN Tails. You want to click on that and then go to where the blue code button. And there will be links here for clone with SSH, clone with HTTPS. You want to choose the clone with HTTPS, copy that to the clipboard. And now we're going to go open Visual Studio. Here on the Visual Studio landing page, you have the option to clone a repository. That's the one you want. For repository location, you'll put in that link that you copied to the clipboard and the path and folder that you want to put your code in. Click the clone button and it will download the entire repository. It will be presented on the right hand side here with a lot of different projects. You want the srv2-vc10.sln file. A lot of these projects aren't used anymore. You can unload OpenGL and OpenAL. And you can set SRB2Win as, right click on it, and choose Set as Startup Project. Up at the top in the toolbar, make sure that you have Win32 chosen. And then go to Build, Rebuild Solution. And at this point, everything should build and you should end up with an srb2win underscore debug.exe. Now, before you get excited and try to run it, you have to tell Visual Studio where your srb2 installation is at. You can do that by going to Project, Properties, then under Debugging, you'll see there's a working directory right here. You can set that to the folder that your srb2 installation is at. You can also hit this little down arrow and hit Browse. Um, I just had it copied, so I just pasted it in there. Another option here is the command arguments. If you aren't familiar with them, I would suggest getting familiar with some of the SRB2 command line arguments. Uh, some of these even date back all the way to Doom and how they function. For example, if you want to add a WAD file, you can do dash file, myfile.wad. So if you're testing a map or testing a particular bug that has a WAD file that you need in order to test it, uh, you can load it here. I personally prefer to use no mouse, no music, no sound. 
um, while I'm debugging. Those are optional. Another useful parameter is dash win, which will run it in a window. And then you can do dash width to set the width of the window and then dash height to set the height. Um, this will also work, the width and the height will also work for full screen if you don't include the dash win parameter. So let's go ahead and add dash win. We've got our working directory. We have our command line arguments. And we'll try to run what we have here. Click this green arrow at the top. There you go, it launches. Now a quick overview of what you need to know about Git. So down here in the bottom right, you have the Solution Explorer and then the Git Changes tab. They're just below my screen here, unfortunately, um, because I have a 200 vertical pixel screen, but I'm recording in 1080p. Anyway, you'll see that the branch defaults to Next. That is a default branch in SRV2. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to hit New Branch and we will create one. Now Git works with the concept of having a local repository and a remote repository. So if you make a change, you first have to commit to your local one, and then you take your local and you push it up to the server, up to git.srv2.org. So after we've made our change, we need to write a little description of what we did. We commit it to our local, and then we take this whole branch and we push it up to the server. Once it's successfully pushed, we can then go back to our own fork of SRV2. And then from this branch option here, you can choose your branch that you just pushed. Now you'll notice there's an option to create a merge request at the top of the screen that doesn't always appear. So what I like to do is I always like to go to the branch that I just pushed. And there'll, be, there'll always be an option right here on this line, not necessarily at the top, but right here to create merge request. It gives you a title. You can put in the description. and then you click create and you're done it's up there and it's ready for review then when you're ready to work on your next issue uh, it's a good idea first to update your own fork of the repository so click on this little fox again in the top left corner click on your repository and then there'll be an option to update your fork just like how there was a button to create the merge request right here if you haven't touched your uh, main next branch it should update without problems otherwise I would reach out on the discord and have somebody assist you with that after your fork is updated go back to Visual Studio switch to the next branch and then you want to click this button right here that says pull and that will bring down all of the latest changes to your local machine and then you can go ahead and create your new branch again and start over Well, I hope that was helpful and that it can get you started with contributing. Um, if you've got any questions or you think I missed something, feel free to mention something in the comments and I'll try to answer everything, uh, all your questions the best I can.